computer since there's less problems. Okay, we're recording. Let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, thank you for the publicity for making these uh, slide templates. They're really nice. Okay. All right, so this is the resume workshop. And a good suggestion while we go through this is that if you already have your resume ready, then you could go through and say, hey, am I, am I knocking down all the bullet points here? Am I getting everything down? And if you don't have one, I'd recommend or either while Arushi and I are talking or while um, or after this, I, I, think, I think a good idea would just to be to start compiling all your activities, all your extracurriculars and writing some things about them. That's a good way to get started because actually, let me just get started in the presentation here. So I just want to start with some disclaimers here. First off, this is not a uh, how to make a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, that's, uh, I said this at the beginning of my interview workshop too. Same thing applies here. My goal of making these slides was, was, was not to make them in a way that I think would be best for kind of like a, a visual presentation anyway. I made them in a way that's best to present all the information. So please do not ever use full bullet, full sentences on a PowerPoint. That's really bad etiquette, but I'm doing it here since I, I just think it's the best way to deliver this information. Next thing, there are multiple right, right ways of making a resume. Everyone has different ways of doing it. The way that Arushi and I are gonna to present to you is a very business school type of perspective. Obviously Arushi and I go to different schools, but I'm pretty sure what they tell us is very, very similar. So I know that for certain things, like if you're applying for a graphics position, you're applying for an engineering position, it might be a little bit different. So the advice we're giving today is just, this is very, very general advice for just resumes in general. So that's something to just keep in mind that if you are applying for some specialty position, if you're applying for a graphics position, you're probably going to want to make your resume very appealing, visually appealing and not boring like Arushi and I are going to teach you how to do it today. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is the, the, the resumes we're teaching you to make that are the most rudimentary form of resumes that'll pretty much work a lot. Arushi, is there something you wanted to add to that? I would say like, yes, it depends, but like when you're applying to colleges, which I know a lot of you might be, or like looking for general jobs and you're not very specialized yet, having a simple but very readable template is a very, very safe way to go. So I know Max said that there's like no right way to do it, but I think like, I don't know about Max's template, but it's like mine is very basic, but it's very readable, it's clean. Uh, and it's like the one that like everyone in our university uses. So there are safe ways to go about it. And I will say you're not going to go wrong by going our way. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. I, I have been told that for most positions, you're never going to go wrong by making it basic, making it visually appealing and doing it exactly the way we're going to teach you today. So it's not like people are going to dump your resume because you're doing it the way we're doing it. It's just as a disclaimer that for certain positions, there might be better ways to do it. But at least for at least at the high school level, if you guys follow exactly what we're going to be doing, you guys will be perfectly fine. So, uh, with that, let's get going with the next slide. You might be asking, okay, what's 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 the point of making a resume? Why am I here? Why am I wasting an hour of my Friday evening to listen to Max and Arushi rant about making resumes? Well, resumes are, um, and I can actually ask Ben to talk a little bit about this when we started using resumes. Now, resumes are just a quick way for employers employees to look at all your experiences. They can look and they can see, okay, this is what this person has done. This is what they did. This is their past work experience. This is the experience they're going to have. And pretty much all jobs beyond the high school level are going to require a resume. It's actually my favorite part of any application because I already have a resume ready. It's just super easy to submit. I don't have to spend any time on it. So that's why I'm saying you should always have a resume ready because you're not going to be wasting time. Somewhere down the line, you're going to need a resume. So why not start now? If you can come up with a reason to not start now, please let me know because I, 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 can't, I can't come up with one. I was just, just, even, even, if you're, even, if you're, even if you're in late middle school, it's not a bad idea because sometime down the line, it's going to come. And if you already have your resume ready, it's going to be super easy when, 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 when you're applying. So that's going to be, uh, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be happy to see their ask for resume because you're like, Oh, ready, have that done. I will also interrupt. Um, let's take a quick poll. How many of you are like uh, in freshman year of high school? I mean, I think I should know for most of you, but yes, Crystal. Awesome. Yeah. So what about sophomore year? Anyone going to raise your hand? Okay. You can use the raise hand feature. Yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. So like, I know you guys might think it's like really early, but the best piece of advice I ever got in high school, and I should have followed it, I didn't just because that's just kind of the person I am. Um, but they, they told me that start working on your resume in ninth grade. So like write down the clubs that you were in, write down what you did in them, because by the time you get to senior year and you have to submit that resume for your college, Yes, you think you'll remember everything, but four years is a long time. And you might remember that you were NHS, I don't know, treasurer back in ninth grade, but you're never going to remember like the, 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 the numbers like, oh, I helped facilitate six events and 500 students in this year. You're never, you're never going to remember those things. So if you're working on your resume from now in college, you'll have this really good detailed piece of paper that you can pick and choose from. And that's so much better than you sitting there in senior year trying to like remember exactly what projects and like stuff that you worked on because it's a pain. It really is. Yeah. And I know, I know high schoolers are experts of procrastination. Don't worry. I am one too. But, um, this is one of the things where I really recommend getting started. If you don't have a resume, make it your goal. I know it's Friday night, so maybe tomorrow morning or, or, or Sunday morning, get started. Why not? And the same thing I say apply to LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn has um, a, a minimum age of 16. I'm not trying to encourage any illegal behavior here. But as soon as you turn 16, I'd recommend making a LinkedIn. Why not? Why not start? If you're 15 or 14 or 13, don't do it because it's illegal. But if you're over that, why not? Okay, let's move on. Here's some just basic visual tips. You only, your resume only needs to be one page. I, I know that there's certain exceptions to this rule, but those exceptions only apply to people who are much older and have much more experiences that simply cannot fit on, on, on one page. Rishi, is there any reason for a high school or college student to have a more, more than a one page resume? There is actually. And... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, sorry, but yeah. I usually have a one page resume. That's a must. There's no reason for you to ha not have a one page resume. Sometimes it's helpful to have another resume that's more than one page. We should definitely have a one pager uh, because no one, no one literally wants to go through your resume for 15 minutes trying to go through five pages of your different competitions. I promise you that's not what they want. But uh, having a detailed resume, one, there are some colleges competitive programs that might ask for a detailed resume where they literally want your life story. And it's, it's fine to have one. Another reason is if you're in ninth grade, uh, have like your actual one page resume and then have like a detailed bank resume that you can like choose events from. So because when depending on where you're applying or what you're applying for, you might want to highlight certain events over others. So that is one reason to do it, but you should definitely have a one page resume like yeah, that. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. So it's good to have a bank of all your experiences. And we'll talk about this a little bit later that you could that you can compile into a resume into like based on what you're applying to. But the resume you actually submit unless it's a, I know there are some colleges that ask for an expanded resume. In that case, that's an exception. But whenever they're asking for a resume, the one you submit, unless it says expanded, you really only should have, you have to think of the the, 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 the poor person there who's uh, gonna be reading the resumes all the time. They don't wanna read through more than one page. They're gonna look at it, they're gonna scan it, probably not for more than a minute, minute if you're lucky. And they're going to say, okay, are we going to offer this person an interview or not? That's pretty much how it goes. So you really just one page, please, please use a simple font. Please don't use some obnoxious. I know there's some like really, really fancy fonts out there. Okay. Maybe that's good if you're making like a, a, a school, a school artwork kind of project, but not for a resume. Honestly, I just say go with Times New Roman. If you're going to use Arial, Calibri, any of those other fonts, you're perfectly fine. But this is not an art contest. That's not what a resume is. A resume is, 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 not, is, not, um, is not an art contest in any way. It's just about getting your information down on the paper in as readable of a way as possible. And under that same logic, please do not use additional colors or different styles. Stick to the same font throughout. If you need to make some things a little bit bigger, like headings, that's perfectly fine. But there should only be black and one font on your resume. There should never be a reason to have more than that. You should allow there to be an easy visual flow. Use things like bullet points, bolded and italicized words, but please don't make your entire resume bolded and italicized words because the person's gonna look at it and uh, get hypnotized by uh, how, 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 much, how much stuff there is on the, on the resume. So please limit that, but use it when you want and put section headers. We'll talk about different sections later, but that's, those are things I recommend. Arushi, you wanna add something to this? No, actually, let's move to the section so we can get to like the actual uh, example. I think that's the most useful. Perfect. Let's just zoom through. 
Yeah. So here's what should I include? The top, you want to put your contact information, external links. We're gonna work. I'm gonna we're gonna, when you share our resume, we're gonna we're we're gonna be uh, going through what this looks like. First section is almost always education, and I'll talk a bit more about what should go under your education depending where you are. And then middle sections are your relevant experience. This is the meat of of your resume, and you can choose to have multiple. Oops, there's a, 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 a typo there, but that's okay. There's, you can choose to have multiple middle sections. Uh, and it's okay, but if you just wanna have one and you can, you have to choose to divvy up your experiences based on how many middle sections you think are relevant. You do not need to include all your experiences. That's a big thing. You do not want your resume to be a laundry list of everything you did. And I know, I know earlier I said it's a glorified laundry list, but it's a glorified laundry list. It's not a laundry list of everything you do. What you need to do is you need to pick a few activities and expand on them because People would rather know that you did five things really well than a bajillion things and uh, put a second of your life into them. They don't really care about those. So that's 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 my recommendation here. And in the last section is where you put your special skills and everything. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And this is something that Arushi said, you can have different resumes for different purposes. Like for example, I apply to some things in government. I apply to some things in business. I have different resumes for each that highlight different experiences. Although at the high school level, you'll need to worry about this. I think just having one resume is perfectly fine. Okay, Arushi, anything to add? No, I think that I think that made sense. Also, like it's very individual. So I'm really hoping at the end we get time to like talk to you guys individually so we can help exactly, you like exactly. create your resume. In terms, of, yeah. in terms of what specific things you include, it just depends. It just depends. Okay. You're gonna the way you want to do it with each bullet point, you want to lead with a descriptive adjective. And you can click on that link when I post my slides at the end, but that link is gonna be um uh, is, is going to tell you a list of descriptive adjectives you can lead off your sentences with. No one wants to hear, oh, I did this, I did that. You want to say, I advocated for this, I consulted, I performed, I did. You want to, every word should add something. Every word in your resume should have a reason. If there's a reason, if, if, if there is, if your resume would just be, be, be just as good without a word, you should delete it. What's the point of having it there? This is, this is very, this is about being concise and descriptive. That those are the two, the two words that I think summarize what you should put in your resume. You wanna, be, you wanna cut the chase and you wanna make sure each word you're putting in there adds value and tells the person something else about, about you. This is just a general format here that doesn't follow for every activity. If you'll see some things depend, you don't want to use this all the time, but you want to put a maximum of three bullet points per activity. Your first first bullet point in general should just describe your organization and your role. For example, we're putting robotics for all. Not everyone's going to know what that is right away. So that's, that's where you'll be putting it. Maybe say your role. The second one is you want to put what you did. And the third bullet point is tangible impact. You want to say how many, how many, how much, how, how, numbers that people can contextualize and say, hey, this person actually did that. And you wanna avoid jargon and acronyms that other people will not know. Like if I told you guys I'm an MSB student, you're probably not gonna know. MSB stands for the McDonough School of Business. We use that all the time in Georgetown, but it's not, no one else is gonna know that. So you wanna avoid acronyms that are specific to certain things that, um, and I think, Unless it's like, okay, like, okay, if it's your like NBC News, that's fine. You don't need it. You don't need it. What, what, I don't even know what NBC stands for. So that, that's fine. But um, if, if it's, if it's, if it's something that everything, everyone knows, you don't, you don't, um, yeah, just don't put it. Okay. So I'm, I, I have these right here and I know that there's, there's other websites that are also really good, but these are just general tips that will summarize everything. I'm going to paste my, put my slides into, into the, into Slack after this, so you guys can all reference this. And here's a sample resume that I found um, that's uh, good for high school students. You guys can take a look at this. So it'll cover a lot of the points that Arish and I said. And there's again, your list of action words for uh, describe describe the things you did. You, those are definitely good right there. All right. So man, we, we finished this in uh, 17 minutes. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, Daniel. NBC is National Broadcasting Company. I appreciate that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into my resume. Uh, I, I I know I'm taking a pretty big risk by uh, putting this out on the internet, but I think it's already on the internet anyway. So give me one second here to stop my share, and then we're also gonna go through Rushi's resume after this. So we'll see what that looks like. So Rushi, get ready. I'm gonna put myself let's, into the. Let's say that we'll be editing my resume because there's always room for improvement, and I'd love to see what you guys think. So. Okay, I'm gonna share my, my standard resume that I use for everything. 
Okay. So let's start, let's, let's start by looking at the top here. So I, I, first off, I recommend using Word. I know Google Docs is easy to edit, but it's just so much easier. Arushi, what do you think? Do you think you should okay, use Word? Yeah, resume formatting needs to be done on Word. Google Google is uh, Google Docs is great for sharing and like writing that information, but formatting wise, uh, nothing beats Word and looks so much more professional. And there are a lot of resume templates already out there that you can use. Um, Hundred percent use Word. Do not go to Google Docs. Yeah, and <laughs> if you are using Google Docs, please be careful because sometimes when you download it to submit the PDF ends up being two pages because some period or something got moved to the next line. So <laughs> I, actually have, I actually have a story about this and I'll take two seconds to say this. Uh, I created a table of contents and you know how you like make dots to like make a line between the like title and then the page number, right. you know what I'm talking about? Is it you have, the like, invisible a tighter period? And then you're, like, what? The invisible period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you say like title like the the page title and they have like dot 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 until you get to the page number at the end so it's like a dotted line in the middle so i individually added every single period and it lined up perfectly i exported it and all the period spacings got messed up and ended up being two pages and that was three hours of work gone to waste so just don't use docs so just use word just make your life easier and use word first one first line your name bolded second line your contact information it's a good idea you know some people put their full address i personally don't think it's necessary uh, unless you live in a super big city and it would be relevant and you're applying for maybe like it was like a government position or something like that would be relevant to know where you live. But generally just putting your city, state, zip code, that's perfectly fine. And that way you can also submit on your, put your resume on the internet like I'm doing right now without worrying about people stalking me. So that's another benefit of that. Although I know Crystal stalks me anyway. So uh, <laughs> um, not, not going to make much of a difference. But anyway, phone number get a Google voice number. So that way your, 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 your phone number doesn't get, get spanned by people from Yelp. Um, and then that way, um, it's, it's just, um, it's just and then always with the email, try to put a school email. It looks more professional than a Gmail or some other. And if you have a Gmail, please don't put an email that has something really funny as your email address make it something that if it's a school email, put out your school email, or if it's going to be a Gmail, make it something that's not super obnoxiously funny. Like, I don't know, sniper rabbit two, two, four. Um, I know that's a yeah, every, everyone should have a professional email at this point. If you're in high school, if you don't make one, you know, just like keep exactly. it exactly. Have your name in there, first name or last name. It makes it easy for the person you're sending it to, to identify your email to you rather than like something weird. So just, yeah. And I'm not making everyone create their own website, but if you have your own website, you can put it there and put in your LinkedIn as well. And if you have a LinkedIn, there's a way, there's a way to change mm -hmm. the, the URL. If you don't know how to do that, I'm not going to go into that right now because that's, that's not what you guys are here for. But if you, if you, if you want, if you have questions on how you do that, make it again, something that's easy, recognizable and, um, and uh, easy to identify. Okay. The next section is going to be education. And if you're in college, you're going to put you're going to put both your high school and your college. If you're in high school, it's probably just going to be your high school. Don't put your middle school. No one really cares where you went to middle school. It really doesn't matter. So if you're in high school, only thing you should be here is, is high school. If you're doing some sort of dual enrollment at a community college, this would be a good place to include that. You want to everything here is just like I'm maximizing space. I got both the name of the school, the individual school that I'm in there and my um in my, my class in there um, and, and also the, the, um, the, 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 the city. And I guess, I guess if it's a school like Georgetown, probably people know where it's, it's in DC, but I guess still just do that in general. Okay. Um, so, I will say, uh, yeah. yeah, it's not like, it depends. You don't have to put your high school if you're in college, but I know most of your high schoolers. So if you put your high school right when you're going to graduate, that's very, very important. Make sure it's visible. And write your GPA, very, very important. This is gonna change because of accounting class this semester, by the way. <laughs> uh, calm down, Max, you don't know yet. Okay, and then, yeah, so write your GPA. Um, SAT, ACT, optional. Uh, it's going to be submitted for your college app separately anyways. You could write it if you want to, but I will say definitely have your GPA. Yeah, on. the only reason why I have it there is because I happen to ask what my SAT score is, so I just put it there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and if you have a weighted GPA, just put it in there as well. Why not? Um, you don't even have, yeah, just like, yeah, just put the information. Or just choose in. one. 
or if like your rank is more important like maybe your school is like very um, like puts a lot of emphasis on rank then you can put your rank there depends on my like, school what... didn't rank <laughs> lucky okay <laughs> yeah yeah and if you're in, if you're in high school you can also put some relevant coursework as well um whatever classes and it's not only the ones that are ap or honors classes those don't it, it doesn't matter it matters if you're like applying for like um a policy kind of position or something like that then it would be um you you you'd um put put maybe more things that are related to that actually this is my policy resume i need to i need to got the wrong one here i'm gonna go back to the other one um but it, that's the, that that's a that's just a good thing for to just keep in mind any okay. specific questions while Max is pulling up his correct resume? Anything about, yeah, any questions at all about your own resume, about general tips? Okay. Okay, okay. no, I'm not looking for inspiration. Okay. Okay, let's move on to relevant experience. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna at least uh, talk about how I divvied up my two sections here. I put one as leadership development, extracurricular involvement, and one as relevant experience. Your relevant experience is kind of, and you don't, you don't have to break it down this way. Like you said, there's multiple ways to break it down. This is at least how I have chosen to break it down. You break it down to the relevant and leadership development. This is the stuff that may be a little bit less relevant to some of the things I'm applying for. Like this is one I submit to like business internships and things like that versus as my policy resume or applying to like government kind of things, this stuff here, would be moved to relevant experience because that's more relevant to their to the to to to, the, to their purposes. So that's mainly the main difference between my policy resume and my other resumes. That some of this stuff here is moved up to the top. I also put in the fact that they worked at elections, things like that, that are omitted from here just because of space. So that's something. Okay, so let's let's go into here. So you see here that. I, I, I maximized each line. I, I have a name, I have what my position, I have the city and I have, so you don't wanna waste space. This is one of the places where you're saving lots of space if you do this every single time. And you can put in websites, stuff like that. And see my first sentence here is, is, is the what, what behind organization. You wanna make this as specific as possible. Every, 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 every um, word in here should have meaning. That's, that's very important. And then you talk about, what you do you talk about your tangible impact that's what people want to see and like i said earlier there is a three bullet point kind of thing but not everything i don't think there's three bullet points so and just each of these i'm not going to go through every single one of them but there's each just tangible numbers tangible things um right like not everyone knows that clubs at georgetown are competitive so i said select it as so that's definitely one of the things you want to say so if it's a competitive position please please put it in there so that's definitely something you should be doing. And then th this is this is where you kind of put in other stuff that's kind of nice to have, right? Like for, for an actual business kind of position, these things are not gonna be that relevant, but it's just other stuff that I know you're not a single faceted person. That's definitely stuff you wanna put in there. And then here in the bottom is where you put your, 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 your skills, activities, other interests, and of course, recreational biking made it in there. Um, uh, and this is where you just put everything like like your um your your language skills your 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 computer skills that's that's a good that's a good good idea arushi is there anything else you want to comment about this no i think i think you're doing a good job all right it's your turn okay actually before i share my own resume i'm going to go ahead and share a resource that was very helpful to me when i was building my resume and i think it might end up being really helpful to you guys so wait, let me, I can't find it. I have too many tabs open. Ah, okay. Do you see my screen? Okay, right. So this is a mess, but it has so many good notes. I'll like forward a link to everyone, but it just kind of like takes, can you, can you see the, can you see the resume yes. template by the way? Okay, yeah. So it just kind of takes you through the template itself. So you start with your education and like how you could format that. Uh, make sure like all of this stuff is like tables. So you cannot see, but like this whole stuff, like all of this is in tables, uh, which makes it really easy to format. I'll show you on my resume. Actually, maybe this isn't, but I'll show you on my resume how I've done that. And uh, yeah, so it, like it tells you how like you start with a strong action verb, verb and then you have like your description and result purpose. Um, like, you know, write down your numbers, Grammar is very, really, really important. Formatting ends up being really important because like they look at little details as well. Uh, yeah, so I'll forward this to everyone. Like how, how do you deal with like a canceled internship? 
uh stuff like that because of covid that's also been a thing and then like this action for this yeah okay. basically every college is something like this so you can use the georgetown link you can use the link they're all yeah. perfectly fine they're they're all good yeah okay i'll just walk through my resume really quickly this is not it's not great um i've been the process wait did i even share the right thing okay yeah i'm in i'm in the process of, of redoing it because it's been a while uh, but yeah, so I just start out with my education. I actually don't have my high school on there. It's been so long and like no recruiter actually cares about my high school because I'm in college and they're looking at my college performance. They could not care less I went to Plano West uh, or my rank or my SAT. Like that's just, it's, it's old news. But for you, it's very, very important. So keep in mind that for you, like you have to include your rank or however, you know, it's like, or your SAT, ACT. So make sure you have your relevant information on there. Have a LinkedIn at the top, phone number. I don't think it's important for me to have my address on there, mostly because I will re relocate if there's an internship or like a job or, or something that I need to relocate for. So for me, my job, my address wasn't important. Okay, and then I have my relevant experiences. This is just like actual jobs. Uh, most of them, things I'm getting money for, except for robotics for all, but I feel like that's still a professional um, experience. So that's why I have it on there. So for experience, that's what I would kind of say like, so it's some either like it's a very professional experience so you're working with a company or you're getting money or something like that and then all your organizations and stuff i put under my leadership experience and activities and as you can see every single bullet point starts with a verb and usually there i think i've used like all kinds of different verbs here um but everything it, it's the first thing kind of summarizes what you got out of it so what really was the main thing that you were working on and then i'll have like some numbers uh, see like what however I can quantify my work and then like just a quick summary so that that is how I would say is like the easiest way to do it you ha I have a different honors section and you can see like these are all this is all like a table which makes it really easy to edit um yeah and then for us they have us include like this little thing at the bottom I'm not sure how important it would be for a high school resume uh but in general yeah do you have any questions? On yeah, that? you don't have to. I don't. I don't know how important it is about work eligibility. I think. I think for some people, it's pretty obvious. Um, no, it, either way, yeah. it's a requirement nowadays. Really? Uh, yeah, basically, I, you should have it no matter what. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, it, it's 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 pretty recommended for for Macombs. They grade our resumes in our first semester, so they actually require everyone to put that there. If you're applying for a job, it's usually the best to just have it on there so that they can easily check. Uh, not that it's not the biggest deal because when you actually apply, they'll ask you these questions anyways. Um, but yeah, and all right, uh, I'm glad my business school did not make me submit my resume in my first uh, semester. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, my first semester, I did not even have much here. Like, I still do not have too much here, you know, but yeah, you slowly start to push away your old things, you add the new ones on there. Um, yeah, but I think as you can see, right, both Arishi and I's resumes look pretty different, like in the top down view, but they come across as giving the same point. Yeah, it should like, and um, honestly, it should fit in one page. Right now, I have a size 10 font. Um, after this, I'd start removing some activities if I like start expanding my resume anymore from here. Um, yeah, I'm on size 10 font as well, so. Yeah, so you don't want to make it smaller than 10. If you have less stuff, make it 12. Um, you know, fill up, fill up your page, uh, add, add more detailed activities, you know, things that you want to talk about. Even if it's not the most relevant experience or the most important experience, you want to have some there that, something on there that shows what you can do. So even if it's not perfect in your opinion, still add it on there if you don't have other opportunities that you can put on there. That was me in my freshman year in college because they say you can't have any more any high school activities. So then like you have a blank resume again and you have to build it up. So you'd like start putting yeah, a lot yeah. of them And you can see some of the stuff. Let me, let me like, I, I, moved, I moved some of the stuff I did in, 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 in high school down here. Like I put debate under under the public speaking blanket so that's how you sneak in some of the stuff in here and that um you 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 you, you can do that so yeah. that's definitely okay so i think that was a good 30 minutes of us going through yeah I, we're gonna we're gonna go through your questions next and i think there were some questions submitted to the form and we're gonna we're gonna be addressing those questions first um let's see i mean Daniel, what, that's a great what, what, point according to his 
<laughs> so Daniel just brought up, according to his resume, Max cannot code. Uh, I will not say that that's entirely false unless you're talking about Scratch. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> but he has so many other skills that it's all good. Everyone has okay. Styles. So yeah. let's um let's just okay let's go back into this. So where were we? Okay, so now answer submitted questions. So man, I have too many tabs open. I know someone's gonna make a comment on that. Okay, how would I tailor my resume to the place I'm applying to? I think that depends on what kind of skills and qualifications you are, you're looking for. Like, like I said, there's some things you can do like relevant coursework. You could probably tailor that to some of the, to some of the, the, the places you're applying to. And like we also talked about earlier, you, you just change different experiences and things like that. Yeah. Uh, for example, if I was applying for like a tutoring position, uh, no problem, Tess, you're good to go. Thanks for coming. And there's a recording. Uh, but yeah, so if you're applying for, if I was applying for a tutoring position, I'd definitely put like all of my teaching experience on the top, move like all that other random stuff to the bottom. Uh, so yeah, and definitely like just order things. Maybe you sometimes like don't have certain things on your resume because you want to keep the page. So bring those things on there that's more relevant. So yeah, okay. I think we cover length of resume, we covered format and how to know, just think about what experiences will be relevant. Any than that, Arushi, I think we basically covered that question. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, length. We just we just answered that right there. Uh, one question. You guys. Yeah, answered. we oh. answered that question. Most crucial parts. I think we answered those as well. Okay, are there any new questions? There should. Uh, be. Actually, another thing that we could do is we could go into breakout rooms and. Yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the floor be open for um questions first. If anyone has any questions initially. I'm actually going to stop the recording right here.